So seconds out, we'd like to be joined by Sandy Ryan, Team GB, hey. prospective Olympian. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good. How are you getting on back home in lockdown? A bit restricted, I imagine. Um, yeah, it's like it's, it's just not normal routine, is it? Like I'm just so used to being away from home, being on camp, training three times a day, and it's just like gone to like one or two sessions a day. It's crazy. Have you got stuff that you can kind of work with at home? Have you got a bag and things like that? Yeah, I got a bag. Um. And obviously, I've got my older brother, so just been like sometimes he's holding the pads for me, which is it's ideal for us, really. Well, yeah, having a former champion level pro in the family yeah. is not a bad thing during lockdown, is it? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. How is Dave getting on? He's all right. He's um, yeah, he's kind of just living his life, and he's like living the dream. He works with um his best mate, so. Uh, with a moto, moto, motocross guys. Oh, does he? Brilliant. Mm. Oh, he's loving it. Yeah. Um, now, you've been so, thinking long and hard before now about whether to stay amateur for another year for the Olympics. Obviously, it's looking very likely that you'll get named to go to the next qualifier <coughs> at your weight. Well, how did you kind of weigh it up? Because until coronavirus came along, you probably would have got a chance earlier this year. And now it's a big weight. Yeah, so obviously uh, Rosie went to the first qualifiers, um, and then the second qualifiers were the world the world qualifiers, which were due to be in May. Yeah, in Paris, wasn't it? Uh, mm, yeah, so I was like literally like just training for that. My focus was on that, um, and it was all going like well, really. Um, but then obviously this this has came up and. I don't think that, I think the qualifiers will be like next year now. Yeah, it's looking that way. Mm, yeah. But you're happy to hang on? You must have had offers to turn pro. Um, yeah, like I'm, I've had like offers, but my dreams have always been the Olympics and to come this far, like a year out, it will be silly of me to, to like just give it up and... I believe I, I don't want to just turn I don't I don't just want to just turn pro with that the Olympics in in a in my background I want to get to them Olympics and then turn pro It'd just be much a bigger platform for me yeah raise your profile and especially if you medal as well it just takes your value up another notch doesn't it yeah definitely like especially females um it's just so much so much better for a female athlete I know like you can do it without the Olympics like it's shown like some of the pros now but for myself as well like I've done eight years on the GB squad now so I want to I want to finish it by getting that Olympic medal and then turning pro How disappointed were you when Rosie got the nod to go to the first qualifier and did you kind of expect it because of the result at the Europeans in Madrid Yeah um I wouldn't really say it was just because of their result in Madrid. Like, like last year was a, it was a hard, hard year for me in my career. Like a lot of people don't know the only, they only know what I'm putting on social media. They don't know what I went through before the them two uh, major tournaments that ended last year. Like I had health issues, I had show, um, injuries, and to be honest, I went to them tournaments and. I didn't even have the right prep. Like it was, a, it was a if and go whether I was going to go to them. So um, it's a bit frustrating when when people say it was after that performance because I wasn't one hundred percent, and everyone knows it. But it is what it is. She got a chance. Like she took it, and she with both hands. And um, but she didn't perform, and now I believe that I'll get my chance with my injuries. They're a lot better now, so I'll be ready for the next qualifiers. Were you considering more seriously the possibility of turning pro when you didn't get to go to the first qualifier, or were you always kind of hanging on to see if you'd get that second shot? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, I, it was always in the in the back of my head, um, because if she did qualify, then I would have been out of the Olympics. 
So it was kind of like I was on the edge. <laughs> I was training, like staying on it, thinking if she, if so, any, anything ha- could happen. So I was training and staying on it. And then, but in the back of the head, it's like, it's like possibility that I'm not even going to get my chance. So, yeah, it was always like in the back of my head. Um, well, it's boxing, isn't it? Like anything can happen. And were you watching her fights at the qualifier? Were you getting stressed? She had one fight, didn't she? And I watched it, yeah. Was, was, it, it. was it hard to watch for you because of the situation? Uh, yeah, it was, it was hard, but... Because she was kind like, of carrying your we, Olympic dreams in her hands as well as her own. Because obviously, like you say, if she'd have qualified, that, that was it for you. Yeah, um... And I have nothing against Rosie and I hope the same that she feels the same towards me because we're both in the same position and we both want the same thing. And um it's just through what I've, what's happened and she's got the nod to go to the first one. I didn't I didn't moan about it. Obviously I was upset myself like at home, but I didn't show it to anybody because you've got to be professional in this game. Um but yeah, I watched her fight and um, there's nothing. I don't really know what to say. From that. I don't really know what else to say. But yeah, I watched the fight, and obviously she didn't. She didn't get the nod. Um, so yeah, I just believe that I'll get my chance now. You've talked a bit about the problems you had last year. A bit of a nightmare year for you, as you've alluded to. Have a lot of those things now been taken care of? So are you better physically for a start this year? Um. Yeah, I am. Um, obviously like a few people know that I had shoulder injuries and it put me out a very long time um, but yeah I'm back full training now um, sparring for when we are back in camp um, so yeah I, I was back sparring about four weeks like a week before the London qualifier so I was when the, the countries come over to spar I was sparring them yeah. And I was my third week of sparring and I was sparring all the girls like um the girls at my weight, like the Turkish girl, the world champion, and they're like they're peaking, they were ready to go to the qualifiers. I was in my third week of back full sparring after months out and I thought like I could have been ready to fight. You, but, felt, um, you felt like you more than held your own. Yeah. Uh, so so it is definitely gave me a a confidence boost because I know I'm, I know that I'm up there with the elites, um, and I can prove that when I'm 100 percent um, yeah, fit you've and had healthy. Your form, you've medalled at international tournaments. It's only in recent years where you've had these problems that you've dropped off yeah. from the podium a little bit. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like the only time, really, when I've not medalled, um, saying like last year, I've not been 100 percent fit and um, so it just proves a lot really and are you still working with angel fernandez alongside obviously your work at gb uh no i'm not okay no are, are you doing uh, any kind just, of work just, outside of gb um when i'm at derby i go back to my club one nation yeah uh, clifton mitchell train with them so it's what I it's what I've done for years, like since I started. Well, when I f- started boxing, um, but obviously the last few weeks of camp, I was in camp Monday to Friday, so I was basically there full time. Like normally it's Monday to Thursday, and then I get I get home. Back, I can yeah. train at home on Friday. But uh, yeah, the, the de- decision to we didn't fall out. Me and Angel were just um, what I was doing. I needed to be doing what I was doing before at GB. Um, I talked to like a lot of people and my GB coaches and yeah, just get back to what I was doing. But it's like, it wasn't a bad thing, I don't, I don't think, because I learned a lot with Angel. But um, it's just like, especially the travelling as well at the weekends, I was just doing so much travelling. And I didn't realise at the time where it was just, it would take, take it out of me. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at the women's game at the moment and just how big it's getting and, and, you know, it's not on a par with the men's pro game yet, but it's going in the right direction. Is there a part of you that's kind of really keen to turn over, even though the Olympics are 
only a year away. You kind of you want to get in while it's hot. Yeah, but I feel I feel like it would just keep getting hotter. I know after this, after Tokyo, and like more girls are going to be turning over, so it's just it would just like keep building. I think women's boxing is going to keep on the rise now. Is there anyone you kind of look at in the women's pro game at the moment that you kind of not necessarily look up to, but you think they're kind of blazing the trail for for all the women to follow? Yeah, there's there's like so many talents now in women's boxing. Like you've got Kate Taylor and Clarissa Shields. Um, like they're just like kind of paving the way, aren't they? And then this, then there's all the other females that are up and coming. Then there's all the females that are like Terry Harper just won a world title. Like the 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 talent in women's boxing now is just it's just growing and growing. Um. And there's, there's some f- good fights to be to be made in women's boxing, like now. Um, but so I feel like it's just going to even get even bigger. Do you think the GB amateur female side of the squad is the best we've ever had? Yeah, I believe so. Like, see, like Lauren, like she's on a roll, like winning the world, Europeans. Um, you got Karis, Artin Starlets. She's going to be. A major problem, like she's they call her the bomber because she stops a lot of girls. When she, yeah, I believe she's gonna, I believe she'll win the Olympics. Uh, wait, 100%. Now you've got you just got luck. We've got a good, we've got a good team. Got Demi coming through, um, got Caroline and uh, Paige at 60. Um, and other girls, there's a few other girls as well at 60. Um, yeah, we've got we've got a really strong strong team at GB at the minute. It just seems like there's more competition for places at the different weights for the women than there has been in the past. Yeah, um, there's about three or four, three or four girls yeah, at each weight. weight. Yeah. Mm. That's got to be, you know, hard for people to get in and stuff, but then it means whoever does come through that is going to be ready for the best in the world. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. It on camp when you when you're sparring and stuff, it's like it's like competition every week, <laughs> um, which is good, like because it keeps you on your toes and keeps you pushing to keep your spot. Um, and then yeah, when you do come, when you do go to tournaments, like you you're ready for like the big stage, really. And you, you're very close to some of the girls, aren't you? Particularly the ones that you room with. Yeah, we're really close. Like we we're staying in contact out out of camp as well now, so yeah, it's, we've got a got a good bunch going. So who is it? Is what you, Karis? Me, Karis, uh, Lauren, oh. and uh, Demi. So it's the four of you. Four of us in the house. It's awesome. Mental. <laughs> yeah, <I can> imagine. <laughs> it's mental. Who, who's the messiest? It's good though. Dem, Demi Jade. <laughs> really? Yeah, she is the messiest. Is she the youngest? That's probably why. She's <laughs> the youngest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who's the bossiest? The bossiest? Um, probably Karis. <laughs> I could be a bit bossy, actually, to be fair. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I, think, I think I'm the old, because I'm the oldest, ain't I? Yeah, yeah, you are, yeah. That, feel, that feels so weird, because I remember getting, I mean, when I was on the squad years ago, and I was the youngest, I was the baby of the, of all the girls, and now, and now I'm the oldest. Out of all of them. I know. It's mad. I've done my it? time. I know. I've done my time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can still turn over, and you'll still be a relatively young pro in the female game. But yeah. Yeah, I am really. Yeah. So. Yeah, young young veteran. It's the best to be. That's it. Experienced enough to win, but fresh enough to still have the energy. Yeah. <laughs> I better get it all get better get it all done now then, Anna. This year, next <laughs> yeah. year. Not too many miles on the clock. I'm sure you'll be fine. No. Really appreciate you speaking to us, as always. Um, nice one. Just before I let you go, for people out there who don't know already, and obviously they should, what are your main social media handles? How can they find you? Um, Twitter and Instagram is the same at Sandy Ryan ninety three, and then I got a Facebook boxing page. Just 
Sandy Ryan Boxing. Brilliant. Really cool. appreciate it. And um, I hope you get back into it as soon as lockdown's finished. We do it a bit anyway, but hope you get back into yeah. training as soon as possible. Nice one. All Thank right. you. Take care. Speak See you soon. Later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye.